So what is this CompTIA a certification? The Computing Technology Industry Association. That's what CompTIA stands for. And this was a group that was created to be vendor neutral in the IT industry. And that was a bit of a problem early on. This, this, com, this association is really a group of resellers, distributors, manufacturers, training centers, everybody associated with making technical people smart and being able to use those skills out in the real world. And the reason that this was created is because before there was certifications like this, every manufacturer had their own certification. So you had to get compact certified. IBM certified, Dell certified, every single manufacturer had these types of certifications and most of those certification requirements overlapped with each other. Well, this finally is a certification that compiles a lot of different very core pieces of technical information into one certification so that if you do get Dell certified, if you do get IBM certified, it's really specific to those things that Dell needs to know about. And they may require you also to have this A plus certification so that they know that you've got the basics. They don't have to recertify you on those pieces. So this saves a lot of time for everybody, especially you, if you're the one who has to go through this certification process. This does have a worldwide reach. Over a hundred different countries are part of this A plus certification. And there's a lot of different languages that the test is provided in. Everything from French to German to Korean to Spanish to Dutch. And uh, I only know English, so this course is really only going to be provided in English. But perhaps someone else may want to do an A plus certification in another type of language. And that may be something that other people might take up. So the real reason for having this CompTIA A plus certification is really not just because it is one of the most popular certifications in the world, but that sure helps. A lot of employers recognize this certification exam. And you can walk in the door and say, I already know this very complete and very comprehensive set of skills based on my certification knowledge that I have. It really makes a very good first certification. So if you're someone who's trying to figure out exactly what you should do in this industry that is just chock full of certification types, this is a great place to start. If you're looking to move into the IT industry or looking to move up in the IT industry, it's really nice for career growth as well. Some, some organizations require that you have some type of certification before even getting into IT. The United States federal government, for instance, requires that you have a certification in IT. And this is one of the primary certifications that they list as part of that. This also is nice in that it is a very comprehensive certification. And when you get this certification, you really do now have this personal knowledge that you understand really the core pieces of information that you need to proceed with almost anything else that you'd want to do in the IT industry. And of course, everyone in IT had to start somewhere. And this makes a very good beginning place to start your IT career because it is a good foundation of the core technical information that you would need to do anything else that you'd want to do in this industry. Let me give you an overview of what these a plus certification exams are like. The version that's out there right now of this certification exam is dated 2006. And this is probably when you're watching this a number of years after that. Every few years, they update this exam. So every few years, this video series will be updated as well. There are no prerequisites to take this exam. So you can walk in the door and take this exam without having any other type of IT certification. That's also important. Now, the questions that are used, the total number of questions on this exam range from 90 to 100, depending on the exam type you're taking. But that's a good number of questions over a two hour time frame. The, in the past, you may read that an adaptive test has been tried out in different areas. And that's an exam that changes based on the types of answers that you give to questions. It's probably not the most popular type. And what you'll find today is that it is not an, ad an adaptive test any, any longer. It's a linear test where there are 90 questions. You have to answer all 90 of them. And they don't change depending on what you might answer on the previous exam. And you also might find that there are some questions that are asked on the exam that you weren't ready for, something a little different that was thrown in. They do that from time to time. And that's OK. They're really testing certain uh, ideas that they have about the certification 
participation exam, that's fine. It's not counted against you. And unfortunately, it's also not counted for you if you happen to know the answer. But it is uh, something that don't be thrown by when you go into that exam to look at. These are all multiple choice exams. I like that part of it. There are some of the questions that are multiple answer questions as well. So it may say choose three of these particular answers or choose the best two of the, the answers that are provided for you. But it will always tell you to how many you should be choosing. So it isn't just saying uh, choose multiple answers. You have to know that you're checking two or you're checking three or checking more than that. And in those particular situations, that helps because sometimes you aren't quite sure exactly the number and that gives you a little bit of help to get through the exam. Now, the exam combinations themselves, if you're ready to take this exam, you first have to take this first A-plus essentials exam. And I've put the exam number 220-601. That's the one that's current. This is a, a very broad foundation of what you'll need. And you have to at least pass this one. You have to not only take that exam, but you have to take one of these three other exams, the IT technician exam, the remote support technician, or the depot technician. And they're for different types of situations. Almost everybody in the industry usually gets the IT certifications of the IT technician exam, the 220.602, because it's a good, well-rounded exam. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. The other two are very specific to the type of job you might be doing. The remote support technician is for someone who provides support over the telephone. So it's very focused on customer support and the questions you might be asking if you weren't sitting in front of a computer. The other depot technician exam is almost the polar opposite. Opposite. It's one where you're not really working directly with people, but you are at a, at a desk and you're sitting there with the hardware and you have to figure out what's going wrong with it. So it's very, it leans very much towards a hardware focus for that exam. Let me give you the numbers of exactly how much is used for the type of exam. So this is the, the essentials exam. This is everything in the different categories that you need to know and the exam percentages for each one of those. And as you can see, the components and the operating systems, those are the ones at the very top. Those are the things you need to know the most about. But all of the other different categories of portable devices and security and communications and professionalism, those also have a very broad range as well. And they're pretty evenly spaced out. There's not one that really jumps well above anything else. Now, what I want to do is layer on top of this all of the other exams to give you a feel. So I know this is a lot on the screen to look at. And I've kept the green. So that green is still the essentials exam. But notice the orange. In every category, you've got a little bit of orange. And it's a little bit different than the green, but you still have it all the way across. And that's why the essentials and the IT technician exam are two good combinations. Now, the other colors, like the yellow for the remote support and the red for the depot technician, you can see there are some categories where some of these colors never even show up. For instance, safety and environmental issues, you really don't have to worry so much about that if you're on the telephone. But it's really useful if you're somebody who's in a depot, has to work with this hardware every day. So something you would need to know about. Notice the depot technician exam doesn't even ask about communication and professionalism because it just assumes that you're never going to be communicating with someone else. And they kind of cover those bases when you get in taking the essentials exam, which everyone has to take anyway. So are you ready? There's a lot of resources that we've created out there for you. Make sure you visit our website at freeaplus.com for all of those. All of the training is there, the entire index, everything is comprehensive and put there for you. We've also got the ability for you to comment on each video. So if there's something that I say that isn't quite right, you didn't understand what I meant by that, it needs clarification, that's a great place to comment on every single one of these videos that you'll find. Uh, again, I've got the message boards out there as well. Make sure you take advantage of those. To be able to leave a message on there, you do have to put some minimal registration information, an email address, and maybe a a name that you'd like to use on the forums. I don't ask for a lot of information there. There are no restricted sections. There's no private areas. There's no paid for areas. Again, I want to keep this completely open and completely free for the people that need those types of resources. So as you go through this training process, visit our website, go through these videos, and of course, give us that feedback. Be sure to visit us at freeaplus.com.